And with that, we will begin. Uh, hello again, thank you for joining and welcome to today's event discussing the ongoing crisis in the unrecognized Bedouin villages of the Negev with the Green Olive Collective and Adala. My name is Eres Bleicher and I'm the Communications and Advocacy Director of the Green Olive Collective, a binational advocacy information and tour guiding center committed to a democratic future and an end to the ongoing displacement of Palestinians. Uh, Marwan, if you could just exit the shared screen for one moment, and then we'll get into the presentation, if that's okay. Um, as I was saying, we provide communities around the world with insights into the apartheid policies of the occupation and the resources to engage in meaningful advocacy in solidarity with Palestinians. Your contributions for today's event will go to sustain our work to amplify the voices of Palestinian and Israeli human rights defenders calling for a permanent ceasefire, a release of all the hostages, and an end to collective punishment in the West Bank and Gaza Strip and to support our efforts to raise local and transnational awareness about the violence of occupation and the ongoing Nakba. We need contributions from you, our wider community, in order to cover the costs of this event and sustain future public initiatives in support of human rights. You can donate to greenolivetours.com slash contributions, which I put into the chat moments ago, and we will split contributions from today's event with Adala and donate 10% of all proceeds also to the Palestine Children's Relief Fund, a humanitarian organization providing emergency medical relief and life-saving care in Gaza as we speak, and to the Human Rights Defenders Fund, which provides free legal counsel to nonviolent civil resistors working every day against the expropriation of Palestinian land in Area C of the West Bank. We are honored to join today to learn about the ongoing crisis in the Bedouin villages of the Negev, or Nakab, as it's called in Arabic, with Marwan Abu Fray of Adala, a leading human rights organization and legal center promoting and defending the rights of Palestinian citizens of Israel through strategic litigation and public advocacy. Marwan is the Nakab office coordinator of Adala, and today he will help us understand the impact of the war on Bedouin citizens of Israel who are among those taken as hostages in Gaza on October 7th and on the villages enduring months of rocket fire. The ongoing catastrophe of the last months has worsened the already dire conditions in employment, infrastructure, and health care in these communities, all against the backdrop of historical discrimination and inequality. Um, Marwan, thank you for your time. Um, and for being with us today. It's truly appreciated. The last thing I'll uh, say before passing it over to you and allowing you to share your screen and begin the presentation is that from this moment on, everyone here should please feel free to ask questions in the chat and as Marwan is presenting. And if you can write question at the beginning uh, with a dash or a colon afterwards, I'll know to look for it and then can integrate your questions into the Q&A question and answer period at the end of today's call. Um, so thank you again, Marwan. Uh, much appreciated. And I'll pass to you. You should be able to unmute yourself. Thank you, Erez. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, uh, so we'll start today uh, with uh, the history about uh, the Bedouin in the Naqab, then uh, move uh, to what's happened uh, uh, today. Uh, before the 7 of October and what happened after uh, the 7 of October. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, uh, Bedouin unrecognized village in the Naqab, what the unrecognized villages mean, what's happened there, and what we do uh, 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 for the Bedouin uh, to ensure their rights uh, together with the uh, Association of Human Rights, uh, member of Knesset, uh, activist, journalist, uh, diplomatics around the world to uh, stand with the Bedouin uh, uh, community in the unrecognized village. I start with uh, uh, my presentation. 
then we will talk about uh, the history and you see the full view now yes we can see oh no it's still in the not the full view. Slides. It's not the full view yet. Yeah, moment. No. Technology is always involved. Uh, where is the full view? Take your time. There's always something to troubleshoot. Where are you calling in from today, my one? We'll try now. Okay, maybe we'll start like that. I don't know what happened. Now you see all? Yes, I believe so. Great. Okay, uh, you see in this picture uh, the really situation in the Laqab, uh, two uh, uh, villages, the building, uh, the Dimona settlement, and uh, the aluminum houses is the Ras Jaraba unrecognized village. Uh, today, the government want to move the Bedouin that live in Ras Jaraba to build a new neighborhood uh, for the Jewish that live in the Dimona settlement. And uh, the Dimona want to move them from their land that Dimona established on their land in the 50s. And today, the government and Dimona municipality want to move around 600 uh, uh, Bedouin from their lands, uh, from Ras Jaraba unrecognized village to somewhere, uh, by single side solution. Uh, and we represent uh, this Bedouin today uh, in the government, in the uh, court for uh, four years until today. And uh, uh, situation in the Naqab, same what's happened in this picture by between Dimona and Ras Jaraba, all the time the Bedouin need to move by force uh, to uh, uh, establish neighborhood, establish uh, settlement for the Jewish, but not to recognize the Bedouin uh, villages and give them uh, uh, basic right like water and uh, electricity uh, uh, and uh, education, schools, medical service, and the other basic service. Uh, the Bedouin community in the Naqab uh, is sub subjected to an ongoing state policy of house uh, and uh, structure demolition. And uh, also uh, the Bedouin community under a wave of incitement for years by right wings uh, association uh, uh, and uh, the, the government, uh, for example, uh, Regavim Association. Uh, Regavim Association uh, for years uh, uh, published uh, reports that the Bedouin uh, is invaders, the Bedouin uh, thieves, the Bedouin still, uh, still the Israeli land, and also uh, by uh, the law and uh, by the government, all the time the Bedouin uh, is invaders, uh, the Bedouin still uh, the Israeli land, and we need to take back uh, our land uh, to control uh, the Naqab uh, from uh, uh, the Bedouin. Uh, for years, this situation in the media, you can uh, visit media websites, Regavim, and uh, you can uh, read there how the Bedouin under the wave uh, of incitements for years, uh, they call us invaders, uh, they call us thieves. And this is uh, what's happened today uh, in Ras Jaraba. For example, uh, the court and the government say, Ras Jaraba come one day and still the land. Uh, but uh, in the history, the Bedouin of Ras Jaraba lived there before the Nakba, before 1948, and Dimona established on their lands. And now they want to move them. And the government uh, in the court say, 
they come one day, uh, maybe around 1978, uh, uh, like that. Uh, but in fact, uh, the Bedouin there from uh, uh, before uh, the Nakba, still until today in their lands. And this situation in Ras Ajraba, same situation in other uh, unrecognized villages uh, in the Nakab. And uh, to understand more, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, the history, what's happened before the Nakba uh, and after the Nakba. Be uh, before the Nakba, about 100,000 Bedouin lived in the Nakab. Following the Nakba, the state began an ongoing process to eviction of the Bedouin from their uh, dwellings. At the end of the uh, 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 1948, only 11,000 Bedouin remained in the Naqab. Well, uh, while most of uh, the community uh, fled or was uh, expelled to Jordan and uh, Egypt, uh, Gaza Strip and Sinai, and uh, today they are uh, uh, refugees. Uh, in 1966, with the end of the military regime, the urbanization process which the state began to plan uh, in the 50s was set in motion. Uh, the state established seven uh, uh, Bedouin townships uh, to uh, modern the Bedouin, to move them from their lands, from the uh, uh, traditional life, from the desert, from the agriculture life to take them one day uh, from uh, their life and move them to seven modern uh, townships uh, to uh, uh, clean the Bedouin history. To uh, 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 the, the Bedouin uh, for years live in the uh, in the uh, desert, live in the Naqab, agriculture life, traditional life. Uh, uh, with sheep, uh, in tents, and one day the government wants to move them to the modern life, not to keep their traditional life, but to change their uh, traditional life and to, be, to move them to the uh, seven uh, uh, townships that the government established between uh, 1969 until uh, 1989. For years, uh, the Bedouin uh, tried to uh, uh, take their rights uh, from uh, the government to recognize their lands, to recognize uh, 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 their villages. But for the government, the situation like that. Uh, if you want uh, rights, you need to move to these seven townships. If you want uh, education, if you want medical centers, uh, medical services, if you want uh, uh, water, if you want electricity, you need to move. And this is the situation continue until today, but after a long struggle uh, that start around 1994 uh, until 2000, the government uh, recognized uh, 11 uh, uh, unrecognized village. And uh, today, after more than 23 years, uh, no different between the recognized uh, village and the unrecognized village. Uh, you can see the uh, numbers, you can see the uh, uh, pictures today, over than uh, 300,000 Palestinian Bedouin citizens of Israel correctly uh, live in the Naqab. Uh, today, uh, in the Naqab, uh, 37 unrecognized uh, Bedouin village. Uh, 80,000 Bedouin live in uh, this uh, uh, 37 unrecognized village, and the others live in uh, uh, 30, uh, 30,000 uh, Bedouin live in the 11 uh, recognized villages that the government recognized between 2000 and 2006 after a long struggle for uh, the Bedouin community association, uh, legal, uh, uh, and a member of Knesset, demonstration, and uh, it's not uh, uh, that this, this uh, um, uh, start 
from uh, 19th until uh, 2000, then the government say, okay, we will recognize 11 villages. Uh, and 23 years after the government recognized the uh, 11 villages, when you visit recognized village and unrecognized village, nothing has changed. Maybe you can see a green sign outside uh, the uh, recognized village. And uh, uh, on the ID, the Israel ID, on the line of the address, uh, you can find address for who live in the recognized village, but who live in the unrecognized village, no address, because the unrecognized village is illegal uh, villages by the law, by the government, and uh, all the Bedouins that live there, around uh, 80,000 Bedouins, illegal, uh, and they don't have any uh, address, and their village is not on the map. If you want to visit this village, you need me. And what's, that's what I do for uh, more than 12 years uh, to lead tours uh, uh, from, uh, uh, I host uh, uh, from around the world uh, every year, more than 1,000 uh, students, diplomatics, uh, uh, association, NGOs that want to uh, uh, discover uh, uh, and know more uh, what's happened in the recognized village. And I take them uh, to the recognize uh, and the recognize and the townships and to understand the situation and uh, to understand what's uh, the change before uh, yani, the chance between the recognize and the recognize. And uh, 23 years after the government recognize the 11 recognized village, no uh, services inside this 11 recognized village. For example, no street, and no no sewage services, no trash services, uh, no light, no electricity. And uh, if you want uh, 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 education in the uh, recognized village, there are uh, uh, schools, but uh, in the recognized villages, no schools, uh, no kindergarten, no. Uh, any medical centers. And uh, uh, after the 2000, uh, we established our uh, 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 office, uh, Adala office in the Naqab. And uh, from 2000 until today, uh, what we do uh, actually is to ensure the Bedouin rights by uh, submit uh, appeals, petition to the uh, court, to the Supreme Court to uh, ask the government to uh, establish uh, schools in the recognized village, establish kindergarten, establish uh, 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 bus station, medical center, and all the normal and basic services for uh, uh, the citizens. And uh, this is, for example, uh, recognize. Now, I'm this sorry to disrupt you, and thank you for the context you've shared already. I'm just wondering, if perhaps the display settings will allow us to have the full screen so that people can see better. Um, okay. Or if someone here in the chat knows what to do exactly, feel free to send in the chat. But there's up top display settings. Okay, in moment. The it would just be so nice for people to be able to see if it's uh, fine. Chat, sorry. Thank you for asking. We send. Maybe slide. Yeah, I can send you the, I can send you, no problem. Yeah. No, it, it just wasn't still the full screen. I was wondering if there was a is way. Is it not the full, full screen now? No. So may, perhaps go to slideshow exactly there. Uh, uh, moment, I understand. Moment, 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 moment. Sorry, sorry. No, no, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. I think that we fix it now. Let's start again. In China. Share screen. The same so far. And then, so then full screen. No. Oh, not yet. All right. We'll okay. Make okay, sorry. It was workable before.
it's important. I will try it now again. Still the same for me, at least. Same? The same, but it's all right. And we could see it before. I was just seeing if there was a way. Oh, we can do that. Uh, before I saw display settings, right? I was wondering. Now? Yes. Great. You've done it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mawan. Yeah, great. I'm not technology man. Neither am I. I'm from it. a recognized village. <laughs> We're good to go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he, we can see in these pictures, for example, part of the recognized village. This is the recognized village. Okay. And this is unrecognized village. No different. Aluminium houses, aluminium houses, same situation. Uh, just, I think, just uh, to freeze the Bedouin struggle and maybe for the world, we recognize uh, Bedouin uh, villages and we will give them rights. And uh, for years, uh, we try to uh, with the Bedouin community and uh, uh, the RCOV, the Regional Council for the Unrecognized Village, it's one of the important association uh, who lead the, the Bedouin uh, rights uh, from uh, the 19th until today, the Bedouin rights uh, uh, for the community in the Unrecognized Villages. Uh, and uh, to understand more the situation in the unrecognized village, this is one of the uh, uh, examples. I take you uh, an alternative tour to, now to the unrecognized villages. This is uh, what's happened in the winter in the unrecognized village. The children need to pass uh, uh, this way to uh, take the bus from the highway to the schools, maybe uh, uh, between five and uh, uh, 45 kilometers every day. Uh, you need to pass the wadi, the val, and then to take the bus from the bus uh, around uh, five, between five and f 45 kilometers to the schools every morning. Uh, that means you need to walk maybe 10 minutes to the highway. Sometimes you need a car to take you to the highway. And if uh, rain, winter, the, the, the uh, almost the children stay at home because no one can pass them uh, in this uh, uh, situation. And uh, for example, uh, when I talk about uh, petitions, uh, look now on this uh, uh, photo. This is uh, the interest of the uh, one of the uh, unrecognized village, but here this school. Okay. Uh, now in the winters, bad. Uh, conditions and uh, it's, uh, uh, not easy to walk and to pass this uh, street uh, to pass uh, this way. Now we submit a petition and then look what's happened. Uh, the government uh, established uh, a road for uh, uh, the school and uh, uh, just for the school. Under the school, no roads. This is what's happened. Okay, we'll give you road just to the school, under the school, nothing. And here, another example, water. If you want access for water, you need to submit a petition. We give the Bedouin uh, a, a center of water from, you can see the pipes, more than maybe 30 pipes for 6,600 people. This pipes, you look now, you see now in picture, for 600 people, okay? After petition, you need, if you want your, Rights, you need to submit a petition. Another example, high school. No high school in the unrecognized village. After long struggle, we uh, submit a petition. And this is the first high school ever in the unrecognized village. This is one of the example uh, of what we can do together, not Adala. Together, Adala, the community association. After long struggle, we after uh, and we submit the petition. Then today, what's happened? We uh, established the first high school ever. This is picture from 2019. This is the first, first high school ever. And uh, this is uh, another example, medical centers in the unrecognized village, no medical centers. You need to petition, submit petition, longest struggle, maybe three, four, five years after 
you uh, uh, can uh, see the uh, medical center for mother and children for the people who live in the unrecognized village. Another example, bus station. You need submit petition. Okay. And uh, now, before we talk about what happened uh, if, after the 7th of October, let's start about how the government uh, brushed the Bedouin year by year to move to the uh, uh, recognize and the seven townships. Uh, they use many tools. Okay, the government, uh, they established a special uh, unit, UAV unit in 2012 to demolish the Bedouin houses just for the Bedouin, the UAV unit. You can uh, actually, uh, uh, you can visit our website and you will find many details about uh, 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 the Naqab and this uh, pictures uh, uh, from uh, our friend uh, in the NCF, Negative Coexistence Forum. We work together and uh, this is the finest uh, details for uh, 2022. Uh, What's happened in the Naqab between, uh, you can see now, uh, uh, more than 80,000 uh, uh, demolition uh, uh, houses that the government demolished for uh, maybe uh, six uh, in six, seven years. And uh, the government use uh, uh, the famous uh, tools for the government is to demolish the Bedouin house, to move the Bedouin by force to the uh, recognized and uh, uh, seven townships to, uh, to leave their lands by force. Now, the situations like that, they send you uh, uh, like warning, after uh, the warning, uh, three weeks, they come and give you a uh, demolition order. And uh, you have now two choices, or you demolish your house by your hand, or they come, they have unit and demolish your house with the trucks, with soldiers, with uh, uh, security. If you chose to uh, demolish your house by your, your hand, you need to send a picture by WhatsApp. I demolish my house. They say, okay, we close the case. If you say no, they will come with the, all the bulldozers and demolish your house. Then they send you a fine. A fine can start between $10,000 and $18,000. Uh, and you need to pay this fine. No way. And if you look in the details, you can find that the last two or three years, the Bedouin choose to demolish their house by their hand no money no one can pay around uh, uh, sometimes they come uh, to my office with the uh, fine uh, around one hundred thousand dollars one hundred thousand dollars i can send you many examples of fine and when you receive this fine you no no choice you will demolish your house and then what's happened no solutions where if you want the solution they come with one uh, uh, solution, single side solution. This is your solution. You need to move to this village, for example. And uh, no Bedouin will accept single side solution by force, by demolish their house. They build again and they demolish again, build again, demolish again, until uh, the children, until the woman, uh, after long time under trauma and uh, Sometimes uh, I can say that uh, some Bedouins say, Khalas, I don't have uh, power, I don't have money. Uh, not surround, but, but not easy for years, three, four years to demolish your house again and again and again. And the children in the morning see the bulldozers, the women. Uh, no one fixes the trauma, no one uh, gives them any services, solution. Sometimes they accept the single side solution and move, but move for the same details, same conditions, aluminum house to aluminum house, because no different between the recognized and the unrecognized. And uh, we start uh, uh, with the Rasij Rabba pictures. Same situation, they give them a uh, single side solution to move to new area, but the Bedouin didn't want to lose their land, they want to move. Uh, if uh, to uh, to um, if they want to move, they want to to move 
by uh, uh, solution uh, after uh, 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 how can I say it? Uh, to sit and hear the Bedouin, not to come with single side solution by force. This is your solution, take it or leave it. Okay, sometimes the Bedouin say, okay, we need to move, okay, but sit with us. Maybe we can start a negotiation, we will accept a solution that good for us, but not to come with single side solution by force to move us. No one will move by force. Sometimes it's happened, but you can understand why it's happened. And uh, it's not, maybe uh, uh, I can't uh, uh, explain uh, in a few minutes what's happened in the Naqab uh, uh, for years, but I will try on this picture, maybe I hope that I give you some summary of really what's happened in the Naqab uh, today. Uh, and uh, today, after uh, uh, the new government, the extra uh, right wing government, uh, for more uh, maybe two years until today, they brush the Bedouin again and again. Many uh, demolition houses, many uh, lawsuits in the court. Uh, we represent today two unrecognized villages, 600 uh, people from Ras and 600 people from Lepaya. Two unrecognized villages that the government want to move uh, to build a new neighborhood and the other village to uh, build uh, uh, an army base, to build uh, a new highway, to build a new railway, to build a new phosphate mine. And uh, to understand more, uh, I will share, uh, uh, now we'll stop here and share uh, uh, screen uh, for a moment. Then we will continue. Now you can visit uh, visit our website. I can send you this map to the chat. You can see now it's a, a, our map that we established uh, in the last May uh, and to understand the situation in the Naqab. Uh, you can visit uh, this uh, link uh, and uh, read uh, more about uh, uh, what's happened uh, in the Naqab and what the government want to do uh, 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 after uh, they move the uh, Bedouin unrecognized village to establish railways, highway, phosphate mine, and army base, uh, and to move from the north, for example, uh, 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 the weapon factory uh, to the Naqab. And to move the weapon national factory from the north to the Naqab, the government need to move five unrecognized villages. You need to move to build our national uh, weapons factory. And this is the unrecognized village on the map. Uh, you can visit uh, this map when you put here you will read uh, details about uh, every village, details, what's happened, and uh, uh, what the government plan to do uh, on uh, this uh, unrecognized village. And uh, uh, this is, uh, for example, Ras Ejraba. This is Ras Ejraba, okay? Uh, live here from years uh, in their lands before the Nakba, after the Nakba, Dimona, the government established Dimona here. Now they want to uh, establish another neighborhood for Dimona. Then they need to move Ras Ejraba. And where they move, they want, the government want to move Ras Ejraba by single side solution to here, to to here. Okay, to build for them a new neighborhood for all the Bedouin that the government want to move for the national plans. Okay? Yani not one village. Ras Ejraba and the Lepqia and Umbadun, and you can find another on the maps. They want to move all the three unrecognized villages to here. Why? Because they need neighborhood here and they need uh, to uh, uh, the open space for the government, we don't know why. 
And for example, uh, and here we will continue. For example, uh, they want to move here in this area, okay? The national weapon of Israel from the north to the Naqab and where they want to move here. And to move national weapons established here, you need to move this village, this village, and this village. Maybe a uh, hundred of the Bedouin that live on this villages and here to uh, another place to establish this factory. And this is uh, one of the examples uh, of what's happened uh, in the uh, unrecognized villages. I send you the link of the map now. Uh, Okay. And now, all uh, uh, what we talk about uh, until now, it's what's, what's going in the Naqab uh, uh, today, uh, before the 7th of October. That means the government, for the government, the Bedouin who live in the unrecognized villages, Unlegal, and uh, the situation is like that. You want services, you need to move to the seven townships and the recognized. Now, after the seventh of October, all the unrecognized villages with no services, no water, some, no electricity, no shelters, no no uh, warning uh, services, and uh, one day uh, everything is. Like boom, uh, we uh, wake up uh, in the morning. Uh, seven children uh, was killed by uh, the rockets uh, in the unrecognized villages, and uh, many of the unrecognized villages of the people to unrecognized villages need uh, uh, health uh, services, but no police, no. Uh, 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 ambulances, uh, no one give you answers. And uh, now, uh, this is the first uh, pictures uh, after the, in, in the 7th of October, uh, in 7 a.m. Here live a family in unrecognized village. And in 7, uh, 15 uh, a.m., rocket uh, killed four children uh, between 10 and uh, 15 years old, and uh, three, uh, the father and the uncle and the other uh, family need uh, emergency services in the hospital. And after that, uh, this is the children, one, two, three, four, who killed uh, in the uh, this unrecognized villages. And uh, after that, and after two hours, another children killed in another uh, unrecognized villages. And their grandma killed also uh, 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 with uh, the children. And uh, in the 7th of October, uh, seven children, uh, six children, and one uh, woman killed in the villages because no warning alarm uh, services, no shelters, uh, no uh, uh, internet, uh, no service for the cellular. Uh, if you want to know if uh, 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 the rockets come to your area, sometimes uh, the uh, if you have internet, uh, the the uh, uh, alarm national alarm of Israel sent you a notification, uh, uh, and rockets come to your area. You need to go to the shelters, but no internet, no cellular uh, uh, services, and uh, six children was killed uh, in the first day. Uh, then more than eleven uh, killed. Uh, in the uh, in, uh, in in around Gaza, they work on agriculture. Uh, uh, 
in the kibbutz and the uh, settlement in uh, uh, Jewish settlement near Gaza, and eleven of them was killed from the Bedouin uh, in the Laqab. Uh, after the seventh of October, uh, the association sit together and we decide to establish an emergency room. Uh, how, what to do? Like what's happened after the Corona? We sit together and we establish an emergency room for uh, uh, help to help the Bedouin and uh, community in the unrecognized villages, to give them uh, food, to give them uh, help them with uh, health services, uh, trauma services, uh, no schools because the schools in unrecognized village no shelters, they close the schools. The medical center in the unrecognized village and the unrecognized village with no shelters. They closed the medical center in the uh, unrecognized village and the recognized village because no shelters. They closed the schools. Uh, many women, many uh, uh, father, mothers stay at home, no work because uh, everything was closed. Uh, the employment high and the situation is like chaos uh, in the unrecognized village. Uh, and the recognized village. Uh, and when after we established the emergency room uh, with our uh, partners, associations, uh, and uh, activists, and uh, we start to uh, uh, stand with the Bedouin community in the recognized village with boxes of food uh, to send them uh, 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 trauma services. How I can say trauma services like um, Psychologists who stay to come with you and talk with you. Uh, the children here, boom, boom, but no shelters, uh, no uh, alarm, alarm, alarm services. They're afraid all the time. And uh, day after, a uh, few days after the 7th of October, uh, uh, the government, the police start to arrest many uh, 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 women and many uh, 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 we talk about maybe 15 uh, Bedouin uh, 8 uh, girls and others uh, boys uh, the uh, police arrest them after they uh, uh, publish a post or uh, maybe uh, share a screen uh, on the Instagram or uh, on the Facebook uh, some of them just a uh, uh, word from the Quran, our Quran, some of them, uh, some word, uh, but the police, uh, like uh, uh, when the police read and translate this word for the police and the government, this is mean you stand with Hamas. And if you stand with Hamas, now you our enemy. Okay, you stand with our enemy. And this is one example what's happened after the 7th of October, many, uh, uh, many students, uh, uh, the university and the college send them uh, letters. You will stay at home now because you publish a post or publish a screen uh, shot on your uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. And uh, like uh, we find us under attack from the government, from uh, the rockets in the recognized village, no schools, no medical centers, uh, no emer emergency service, no uh, health care. And uh, we, we try, for example, this is what happened, uh, rocket here between uh, the unrecognized villages. And this, look what the children do. They find some place and uh, just uh, uh, go there, uh, after they're afraid from the rockets, afraid from the bomb, bomb, and they find some place to just uh, uh, alternative shelters. I don't know how I call it. And uh, now the government think about solution for the Bedouin. They give some of the villages alternative shelters, American shelters, I think, maybe Hasco or Asco shelters. It's nothing we can do with the shelters. And uh, 
some of us uh, other associations start to uh, uh, give the Bedouin containers like that, to put uh, the containers uh, under the land, and it's not uh, security, it's not good, not safe. And uh, after the medical services uh, closed, uh, 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 their services are recognized village, we send the letters, and after many uh, 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 days, maybe after two weeks, they uh, send uh, shelters to open again the medical center in the unrecognized village. It's one of the three uh, uh, medical centers that uh, uh, open again after uh, our letters and after uh, our work in the emergency room. They send the shelters maybe one month here after 7th of October, one month, no health services. If you need health services, you need to walk or to move to uh, 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 the nearest uh, uh, village or townships. Uh, this is another uh, 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 shelters that we uh, collect money from uh, uh, many uh, uh, people, association, uh, and uh, we buy uh, shelters. Uh, safe. This is safe shelters. This is the shelters. Uh, it's not the very safe, but this is what we can do with the money. We collect money and uh, 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 and uh, uh, put in uh, around uh, uh, three hundred fifty. Uh, shelters in the unrecognized village, uh, shelters like that, and shelters uh, like that, and uh, another different shelters. And uh, when we talk about uh, the 7th of October, today the Bedouins say, okay, uh, after the 7th of October, we find ourselves under attack. We find ourselves without any emergency services we find ourselves with no uh, with nothing no medical services no uh, schools no uh, no work and uh, they ask today when the government will recognize us yani, uh, we can't stay on this situation for years now uh, the nearest jewish uh, uh, settlement, maybe 1,000 uh, Jewish citizens live there, they have all the services, shelters, warning, electricity, water, schools, kindergarten, but this is school, this is villages for uh, about 3,000 Bedouin, 5,000 Bedouin, no any services. Why we can't uh, be like the nearest Jewish uh, settlement. Why we, uh, why the government didn't recognize us and give us our basic rights, water services, and uh, they ask about what's happened in the future. For the the wars continue, okay, until today rockets everywhere, and uh, if we want to fix the the shelter situation, for example, in the Bedouin unrecognized village, we need more than 11,000 shelters, okay? And we, we uh, in the last uh, two months, we uh, uh, maybe uh, buy around uh, 350 shelters. That's what we can do. But it's come from many organizations that work together around the world. They come and work with us uh, uh, after uh, we, uh, uh, do many calls and uh, crush the governments and the letters for the Knesset for the government. We try uh, uh, to do like to uh, uh, to make a coalition around uh, the world uh, and inside uh, uh, in the Naqab to collect money to stand with the Bedouin. And uh, until today, we work in the emergency room. Uh, but no one can fix the situation here, just the government. We can collect another millions, okay? 
give them more shelters, okay? But we can't collect money for 11,000 shelters and we can't fix the situation. The shelters not fix the situations. If you want, if you need shelters, you need warning services because if you have shelters, you don't have internet and cellular data for uh, the warning services. The normal townships, when something happen, you hear the warning, but the unrecognized village maybe can hear the warning services from the Jewish village or the Bedouin, uh, uh, the nearest Bedouin townships. Uh, but that's all. If you don't have cellular data, don't have uh, internet, maybe you can sleep in the shelters because no one will know when the shelters come without warning. Uh, and another example, uh, uh, the schools in the corona, same situation, the schools in the war. The schools in the corona, they close, no schools, and they start uh, by Zoom. But the children are recognized village, no computers. We submit petition to the Supreme Court to give the Bedouin uh, 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 pupils in the unrecognized village computers and internet because no Zoom in the unrecognized village. How the Bedouin children pupils can continue their study without internet, without computers. Uh, they reject uh, our petition. For example, uh, they will fix the solution. Okay, years after the corona, no thing is changed. Uh, and uh, in the in the world, same situation. They close the schools for maybe two months. Uh, the uh, children in the uh, stay at home. The other places continue by Zoom. The Jewish continue by Zoom. The other Arabs continue by Zoom. But the Bedouin, no Zoom because uh, no internet in the house, no computer in the house. Uh, and uh, this is one of the examples what's happened in the recognized village after the war, before the war. And uh, uh, the situation today, what the government will do with the uh, uh, demolition orders after the war. Yani today, in the last three months, we don't hear about Yuavion because they were they they uh, no one empty now. Okay, all of the police, all of the uh, the government in the war. But after the war, many of the Bedouin ask, okay, well, the government will come one day with Yuavion to demolish many houses. Uh, what's happened? After the war, we need services, we want shelters, we want warning alarms, we want schools, normal schools, and normal uh, uh, basic services uh, 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 to live uh, in our villages. Uh, I hope that maybe I uh, will try uh, I, I, in the last maybe 50, 50 minutes to explain really what's happened uh, in the Naqab in my English, okay? Not perfect English, but I hope that uh, I explain myself uh, uh, and what's happened in the Naqab. Uh, maybe if you have questions, uh, errors, uh, anything, I can send you uh, materials, or can you visit our website, uh, adala.org, and be in, uh, in touch and to know more about uh, the situation in Danaq. Thank you, Mahwan. Deeply appreciate it. And thank you for all the insight. Um, thank you to those who have already sent questions in the chat. If you have a question you haven't asked yet, feel free to send it now. Um, but firstly, just to say that um, we appreciate the work that you and Adala do. And our, our thoughts are with the families and communities who have lost children and family members during this time. Um, so painful to hear. And I guess I, I have a question or two, and then I'll, I'll turn to a few questions that have been sent from the audience members. But to start off with, I'd love to just hear a few sentences from you about uh, yourself and your background. Where are you from? How did you first come to do this work? Um, it'd be great to hear a little bit about your entry point into advocacy and legal um, defense. Do 
Did you hear my one? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, did you hear the question I asked or was I too quiet? No, I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. Um, I was just saying deep appreciation for the work that you and Adana do. Thank you. And I was wondering if you could share just a little bit more about yourself. Where are you uh, from? How did you come uh, okay. to do this work? What is your entry point into advocacy and legal defense? Yeah. I come from a unrecognized village. Uh, uh, then one day, uh, for, from uh, uh, maybe in the 70s, my father uh, decide to build a, a house, normal house, in uh, one of the seven townships that the government established to give us a good life, to give us a good uh, rights, education. And uh, Actually, I think he made a great decision. Uh, for years, my grandfather and father live in unrecognized village for no, with no things, no services. My father's need to uh, uh, a donkey to go to the school uh, and uh, need maybe uh, uh, help to go to the uh, medical center far away uh, from their villages. Uh, and I grew up between the unrecognized village and Rahat city. Rahat city is the biggest Bedouin city uh, in uh, uh, Israel. And uh, when I look in the what's happened in unrecognized village and in the townships and the different, uh, I find myself year after year uh, made researches to uh, know more about why we have unrecognized village, why my father need to decide one day to move, uh, because he know very well that nothing will change. I talk about the 70, 72, uh, more than 50 years until today, nothing has changed. And uh, I start uh, to uh, lead tours in 2008, uh, after I, uh, made a researcher and discovered the, uh, uh, the Naqab very well. Uh, I know all the uh, unrecognized villages, uh, whereas the villages uh, I have uh, good relationships with uh, all the local uh, committee and the people uh, from the unrecognized villages. And I believe that uh, for years I, I do the same thing. Uh, it's not easy. It's very hard to uh, uh, to meet people every day. To uh, call you, Marwan, demolish our house. How I can fix that? We need water. We need transportation for our children. Uh, we need uh, medical centers. Sometimes I can't do anything, and sometimes broke broke you. You can't do anything and you feel, okay, what I can do. Uh, and I continue because I believe that uh, we need to try. We need to stand with our uh, community. And uh, when I lead the tours and uh, uh, explain the situation, I believe that year after year, we can maybe do more to try uh, 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 would to send report for the diplomatics uh, to the Knesset to uh, the government uh, submit petitions uh, sometimes we lose cases that's normal but sometimes we success in many cases and when we success in cases and establish a school kindergarten or medical services that mean uh, here we can do we can do, and we need to keep going to try uh, uh, to ensure the Bedouin rights, and we need to change the situation. And really, we together, uh, association, uh, uh, NGOs, and the coalition of recognition in the Naqab, uh, success for years to change many things. And we continue. It's not one day and one year, we need years, because the government, uh, uh, we don't know 
if the government will, will recognize the villages one day, the government can establish, uh, uh, the government already established every year tens of settlements, Jewish, everywhere, in the West Bank, in the Naqab, everywhere. And they have money, million, okay? But when we talk about the Bedouin, no money, no one wants to recognize and give them their rights. And uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, we have a dream, all of us, and maybe one day the situation will change. But uh, when, you, when you know the details and when you uh, have a good relationship with the people, your connection be more strong and strong and strong, and you can't stop one day to uh, go far away and uh, leave the Bedouin, uh, uh, the women, the children, more than 5,000 uh, children between three and years old stay at home every year because no kindergarten, uh, no schools. Many women, many girls stay at home because no schools, far away. Uh, and uh, you need to believe uh, uh, that you can do uh, uh, and you can do more together, not you uh, alone. You can more, uh, do more and to try your best. It's not easy, uh, but we together can to change, maybe a little uh, uh, change, but year after year, the little is big and we change. We, we hope and we believe in that. Inshallah, um, we've gathered here today as a community of people around the world uh, in solidarity and because we believe in the universal right to home, safety, infrastructure, electricity, water, um, and equal access to opportunity. And truly the discrepancy in resources that we see, and I've seen also in the, the Naqab and some of your tours and tours with the Negev Coexistence Forum is some of the most blatant inequality I've seen in Israel-Palestine. Um, and I just wanna make clear to people here because th there are so many people joining from around the world that it's important to remember that these are citizens of Israel Many people around the world are sometimes more familiar with the context of the West Bank and people under military rule. Um, but these processes of forcible systemic expulsion, eviction, uh, disenfranchisement are occurring um, in the Negev uh, and also relate to larger structures um, of discrimination against Palestinian citizens of Israel in general not only the Bedouin. And I wanted to ask you quickly, because unfortunately we're nearing the end of our time, if you can say a word or two about how what's happening to Bedouin communities in the Nakab relates to the larger context of Palestinian citizens in Israel and the larger structures of power and inequality or policies. Again, so between the Bedouin uh, uh, in the Nakab and the Palestinian in the West Bank, for example? Uh, I asked specifically about with Palestinian citizens of Israel in general how what's happening to the Bedouin and the Negev relates to the discrimination against Palestinian citizens of Israel in general. Look, the, for years, the Israel government tried to say that the Bedouin in, in the Naqab is not Palestinian. Okay? The Bedouin is in the Naqab uh, is not Palestinian. It's not, the Naqab is not part of Palestine. Uh, and year after year, they try to uh, uh, work on that, to uh, uh, be clear on that. For the government, the Naqab and the Bedouin uh, uh, who live in the Naqab is not Palestinian. Okay, it's not part of Palestine. But uh, in fact, the Bedouin, uh, uh, what's happened in the Naqab happened in the West Bank. What's happened in the West Bank happened in the Naqab. For example, uh, first of all, we are all Palestinian and we have great relationship everywhere. My grandma from the West Bank, okay? Our friend from the Naqab, they have relationship and they have uh, 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 families in Gaza, in the West Bank, in Jerusalem, uh, uh, refugees uh, after the Nakba in Sinai, in, in everywhere, okay? Uh, and 
what's happened in the West Bank, for example, the apartheid in the West Bank to move the uh, Khan al Ahmar uh, from their uh, uh, villages today to other uh, villages happened in the Nakba. Uh, the Khan al Ahmar moved by force after the Nakba from the Nakab to the Khan al Ahmar where they live today. And the government moved other Bedouin to their lands in the Nakab. And now the government wants to move this Bedouin that moved after the Nakba to new area. Yani, uh, the same situation, and we uh, work with many uh, associations in the West Bank and Bethlehem and uh, Jerusalem and uh, 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 Gaza. Uh, we work together in different cases uh, and the Bedouin and the Palestinian, uh, I think, have great uh, relationship. Uh, uh, the difference between us as in the West Bank, the under uh, uh, army regime, under army uh, law, okay? And the Bedouin here under Israeli law. In the West Bank, special law. But all of us under uh, uh, the under the uh, military regime, okay? The government uh, uh, decide to move us. Uh, the government decide to give us services, to take our right, to give our to give us a right, and like that. Uh, it's very complex. I think it's not easy to understand. But uh, this is maybe uh, uh, for me uh, uh, no. Thank you, Marwan. And just speaking shortly to the linkages, the links between the context in the Negev and in the West Bank and for Palestinian citizens of Israel in general is very important. And how, even though it's slightly different context, there's a, a shared project of displacement and inequality that's taking place is very important. Um, unfortunately, we're nearing the end of our time. I'm wondering if, Marwan, you have any last thoughts or words you want to share anything about what you want to see in the future, your vision of justice, or any last thoughts you want to leave us with? I want to thank you all for joining us. And uh, it's important, and I appreciate that, to uh, uh, join us and uh, uh, hear about and know more about what's happened in the Naqab. And I uh, want to thank you, Erez, and Grievo Life for uh, your work. It's very important. Thank you again. And uh, I say all the time that it's a huge difference between what I say now with my presentation, with my English. And when you come to the Naqab and see, and this is very important, who want to understand, they need to come to sit with the Bedouin, to eat delicious food with the Bedouin, to visit the unrecognized village, sit with the woman, good coffee, to hear the uh, uh, story from the woman, from the grandma, from the grandfather, and uh, 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 to understand the situation uh, very well. And uh, maybe one last message. Uh, one, I, maybe I visit many countries around the world and to explain what's happened in the Naqab, uh, 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 many lectures, many diplomatics uh, uh, for years. And I visit uh, the US uh, for one month and last summer, different, maybe six uh, states, uh, meet many people, meet uh, the indigenous people and share our stories. Okay, what's happened here, same. I, I actually look in the chat and uh, Molly Larson ask, uh, uh, this is the, your answer, really. What's happened there? What's happened in the US and the, with the indigenous people, maybe South Africa sometimes, uh, uh, happened in the Naqab in the West Bank. And uh, I hear in, in my tour in the US, I hear, no, everything is good. We have, we, we uh, the government sent us reports, everything is pink, you have rights and like that. But I say, okay, I come from the Naqab, citizen, 
for Israel, okay, Palestinian citizen of Israel, but I live on the Nakba. And uh, I know very well the situation more than the government. And uh, what I try to say that it's important to share the real, uh, the, uh, real story. Uh, and uh, for us, for me, you are our ambassadors. When you hear, when you look uh, in the media, uh, the, uh, all the time they try to like uh, uh, maybe um, to share that everything is good, democratic uh, uh, country, give the Bedouin rights, but but in fact, no rights here. More than one hundred thousand Bedouin, thousand of childrens, more than five thousand childrens. Three, four, five years old, stay at home. Hundred of girls, no schools. Hundred thousand of women, no health care. Uh, for example, pregnant. Okay, woman pregnant need need now. They call the ambulance. The ambulance say, I'm sorry. I can't come to your village because I don't know where you live. The Bedouin village is not on the map. And in the good case, maybe. Come, someone take the woman to the hospital or the highway, then the ambulance come to the highway and take the woman. In the good case, the woman will uh, uh, birth in the way. The baby will come in the villages, in the, in the, uh, in the desert. Okay. And uh, many uh, examples about that. Yani, uh, for me, for the Bedouin, you are our ambassadors. And uh, thank you again. Thank you, Erez. And uh, hope you uh, safe days. And uh, you are more than welcome to visit us in the recognized village. Thank you, Marwan. I can't think of a better final note than that. And I want everyone here to know that after this, you also have a relationship yourselves to Marwan and to the Bedouin communities of the Negev. And you should, of course, as Marwan is saying, Share what you learned today. Share the stories that you've heard. Um, Marwan, deep thanks to you and to the work of Adala for doing all that you can to improve the conditions on the ground. Um, and with that, I just want to end by thanking also everyone here who joined from around the world uh, to hear directly from Marwan and who has joined in the past to hear directly from activists on the ground. As I mentioned at the start of our time, we depend on contributions from you to cover the cost of our events, to sustain our work, uh, combating occupation, shifting the fundamental landscape of discourse around Israel-Palestine and advancing an expansive and robust vision of justice. Uh, you can contribute at greenoliftours.com slash contributions, which I just put into the chat once more. Your contributions will allow us to sustain global campaigns encouraging people around the world to take action in 2024. They will allow us to sustain our material support for communities facing displacement in Area C, to sustain a robust infrastructure for solidarity, advocacy, and action in the coming year, launch new global campaigns, and continue highlighting Israeli and Palestinian voices like Adala, insisting especially now that only freedom, equality, and dignity for all can bring a future of mutual prosperity. We hope you will take what you heard today as a charge towards action. And we hope everyone here has lovely, lovely days. Uh, thanks again. And our next webinar will be on February 4th. Uh, look for more information about that soon. Thanks, everyone. Talk soon. Yes. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you, Makwan. Be well. Our thoughts are with you and with everyone. Thank you.